So this video is going to show you how to permanently mod any PSP no matter what firmware it's currently on. You don't have to worry about what model it is. This video will work for anyone and you'll be able to play as many emulators and backup games as you want. As you can see this PSP is set right up. All the links are in the description below. So we're going to start off with turning on our PSP and going over to the settings and scrolling down to system settings. Then we're going to go down all the way to system information and check out what system firmware is currently on. It's on 6.60. So what we're going to do is update it to Sony's latest official firmware which is 6.61. So we're going to plug it into our computer just by plugging it into our USB. It's going to automatically boot into USB mode and we're going to jump over to our computer. We're going to want to extract the just-in-case PSP zip file. This will only take a few seconds depending on the speed of your computer. And then you're going to want to copy the first three folders right over to the folder that popped up when you plugged in your PSP. This should only take a few minutes. Once this complete, we could jump pretty much right back to our PSP. We're gonna unplug it and go back, and then we're gonna scroll over. I'll show you that it's still on version 6.60. We're gonna go up to system update. Now, it doesn't work on my screen capture, so I'll just do it straight from the PSP. So we're gonna go down to storage media. I'm going to speed things up here a little bit so you might want to pause the video if you're following along. So pretty simple, it's a normal update. Now once this finishes, jump back to my screen capture show you it's on 6.61 so we'll scroll over to the game column and go down to our memory stick you're going to see a few applications here and we're going to go down to the pro update we're going to launch this and this will install a custom firmware onto our PSP so just continue through by pressing X this will install it once this complete Press X again and your PSP will reboot. Everything will look pretty normal, but we'll scroll over to the system memory or system information and you'll see that we got the custom firmware. This will allow us to launch allow us to launch Infinity, which lets us make this mod permanent. So we're gonna plug it back into our USB which is connected to our computer and jump back to the computer. So we're gonna go back into the just in case PSP and we're gonna go into the do not copy folder and go into Affinity. And then depending if you got a PSP Go or a normal PSP, I have a normal PSP so I'm going into standard. On your PSP, go into the folder PSP and game and then update. Rename the folder that's already in there to 661 OFW and then you want to copy the eboot file over to your PSP. So it'll only take a couple seconds and we jump back to our PSP. Now we're going to scroll back over to the game section. We're going to see a new app called Infinity. I'll jump back to the PSP. We'll launch Infinity. And just press X and that's it. We'll reboot and we'll go over to system information and you'll see we have infinity installed so now we'll go back over to the game column go back to the memory stick we're going to install the pro update one more time so make sure it's pro update launch that And just do the exact same thing as we did before. Press X. 
our PSP will automatically reboot. And we'll scroll over back to the system settings, system information, and there we go, Pro C Infinity. This is a permanent hack. So we're going to make this permanent on every restart. So we're going to launch Infinity again. This time Infinity is going to look a little bit different. And we're going to press left on the D-pad when it boots up. So select Pro CFW and press the home button and X to exit. And we'll scroll down and make sure everything's the same. And it is, so we're good. I'm going to show you that this is a permanent hack. We're going to take out the battery. So the PSP is powered off and I'll turn it back on because before in the PSP modding scene, newer versions of the PSP were only able to be semi-hacked, meaning that every time you turned off the PSP, you'd have to reinstall the CFW, which lets you play homebrew or emulators. This method allows you not to worry. You'll never have to install another uh, custom firmware again because as you can see, it's already installed. So now that it's modded, you're going to want to set it up with some games. So we're going to plug it back into our computer and I'll show you where you need to place your PSP backups and PlayStation 1 games. PSP is pretty easy, so we're going to start off with that. If you got a PSP, it's either going to be in a CSO format or ISO. And what you got to do is copy it over to the ISO folder. It's just a straight drag and drop. Once that's complete, it that's all you need to do. Now, if you got any PlayStation 1 games, which usually come in a bin and queue format, we're going to have to convert it into eBoot. So what we'll do is go into the Do Not Copy folder again, and I've included a program that will do the conversion for you. So extract the folder and then launch the application. I use the classic version or classic theme. Doesn't really matter that part. Navigate to the folder where you keep your games. If you got any cover art or whatever, include it in the side. You don't need to. At the very bottom, you apply patches and convert. Also set a destination, of course. I like to do it to my desktop first and make sure everything completes correctly, and then I copy it over to the PSP. See, you could also change what the folder comes up as by going into the options and using the game title instead of the game ID, which is sort of just a bunch of random letters and numbers to most people. But in the end, you just want to drag it in the PSP folder, and inside that folder, there's a folder in capital letters called Games. Just drag and drop, and that's all you need to do for that. Now, compatibility is pretty good, but some games don't work. Now, again, I've already included a whole bunch of emulators, and if you want more, I've included a whole bunch more in the Extras folder. I've also included a whole bunch of themes that you can select as well that are already set up. So we'll jump back over to our PSP and make sure everything is working here. So we'll go down to our memory stick and you can see there's our GTA 2 with our cover art and all our emulators and finally our PSP game. So if in the end you hate this and you want to go back, I've already got all the files included to do that. Just plug your PSP back into your computer, navigate back into the PSP folder, game folder, the update folder, 
and then you're going to rename the eboot file to infinity and then rename 661 OFW to eboot. Then jump back to your PSP, go over to the game column, go over to the memory stick, then you're going to go on a chrono switch. It'll give you a warning that this is a little bit dangerous. I haven't had an issue and I've modded quite a few PSPs, all different versions. So just follow the prompts and then you'll be navigated back to the 6.61 update. So once this complete, you'll be back to your stock PSP. So there you go. The easiest method to modding a PSP. So I've included everything that you need in the pack in the description below. I've also included a link to an adapter that allows you to use a normal SD card for a memory stick. Um, if this video has helped you out in any way, throw a like and a subscribe and leave a comment below for any suggestions for future videos. I've got lots of different consoles to do whatever you can think to. So. Like and subscribe.